In this video, I'm going to show you the stock photography process. Once you have your images, how to process them, how to keyword them, how to export them, how to upload them, how to submit them. And then, is this still relevant in 2022? I don't know. Let's see. For this video, I chose strawberries because they look delicious. They look awesome. And why not? Who doesn't like strawberries? They're probably one of the easiest subjects to take pictures of. They're colorful. They just look great in an image and I don't know, can we sell them? We'll find out. The first thing I did was get my white and black ba uh, backgrounds because they simplify the process. Having something isolated on white makes it sellable. It's easy, it's a product, it's something that a lot of people are gonna wanna buy. Uh, and then also, I bought these, they're just like, poster boards and they come in all different colors. I used the red and the blue. These are uh, paper, so if they get wet, they're pretty much ruined. But they're inexpensive. They're a great way to get different colors, different backgrounds. That's what I use for this image. You can use a cutting board. That just adds another element. And this is something that's in almost anyone's house. I found this little basket. It's like a heart-shaped basket. So different concepts, different things that you can do with the strawberries. And yes, we always need a little bit of tape. <laughs> you never know for what, but it's something that we always need. I mean, who doesn't use Gorilla Tape? This thing is it's a lifesaver. I'm gonna add all these products to affiliate marketing links down here in the description. If you use that link, I get a small commission. So it's a great way for you to support this channel and I really appreciate it. Um, all these pictures I took with natural light. I went, I stood up outside and when the sun was too direct, all I did was use this diffuser to block the light or diffuse the light so it was more of an even even spread so now just to get an idea about like strawberries so strawberries is just subject I use if we scroll down through my shutterstock I, I went and gathered all the images that I've previously done with strawberries I have 31 items so only 31 pictures that over the years I've done with strawberries I've made a total of thirteen hundred and eighty two dollars with strawberries so on average I've made $44 a picture, uh, $44 an image of a, a strawberries. So is it still worth it in 2020 or 2022? I don't know, all the agencies have changed prices and it seems to be like things are going away from stock. But <laughs> look at this, let me show you Adobe stock. There's a message right here. It says nominate your assets by June 23rd. I have 2,002 eligible assets that could earn me up to $10,000. Stock is potential. It's another avenue. It's not a get rich quick thing. It's not. That I'll tell you right now, it's not. But with stock, I've been able to purchase everything that you see in my desk and more, including the computer, the microphone that's back here that I've never used and don't know how to use, the Mavic Pro 2, and the Mini Pro 3 that I haven't used yet. And maybe if the weather cooperates, I'll make a video about this for next week. So stay tuned, because I like this little thing. So can you still do it? Absolutely. But let me show you the process so you can learn a little bit more and maybe get started yourself. So once you have all your images, the first thing I do is I go to Lightroom. So this is the first ones I took on a white PVC. This is a white background, very simple. Whenever I do edits, I just keep it very basic. I just take exposure, make sure if I want to isolate it on white, I make sure that it's clean. Not every image needs to be completely isolated. This, there's a little bit of blue here from the shadow, which is totally fine. If you completely, if you really want to completely isolate it, then you can go here with the mask and you do select subject. The new Adobe Lightroom can completely select your subject and then you can change the exposure. So I can completely darken or brighten the, the subject or invert the mask and now the strawberries are perfectly sharp and the background is completely overexposed. I don't have to do that with this one because I like how they are so let me just delete that mask. Uh, this one is one that I isolated or something like this and I have a lot of very similar images that I use because they're just slightly different compositions. I take a lot of images. When I'm ready to check them, I zoom in at 100% and make sure that the image is clear and that the focus is where I want it. That is the first thing. Uh, you'll see that I took a lot of pictures on different backgrounds. So here's one on the dark background. So you can see the, the seeds are very clear, they're crisp. You can see what I'm talking about. Uh, just changing angles, changing 
many little things that you can add and adjust to make the same subject look different. So I ended up taking about 400 images and I selected 200 of them for this photo shoot. Like I said, the same strawberry. Now you have a prop, you have a cutting board, you have a knife. It's very easy to just keep adding and adding or changing the background. Now I have a red background. There's many ways and many things that you can do to get the same product to look completely different. And to take a million, literally, I could, I could go back again and shoot more strawberries and do completely different pictures than these, I got, than these that I got here. It is limitless. It is very easy to add the keywords because you already got the same subject. So what I do is I go back to the library and now this opens up all this, the metadata. I start with the most simple image. I start with one basic strawberry and I start adding keywords like red, strawberry, food, fresh, uh, if you do a Google search, you'll, you'll, you'll learn everything about strawberries, which is another reason I like stock photography. You get to learn about the subject you're shooting. So I could add images like organic, biodynamic. You can't tell if the strawberry is organic or not by looking at the image. But if somebody is searching for organic strawberries, yours is going to pop up. If you're looking for genetically modified strawberries, add those to the keywords. This one's going to pop up. You don't know what it is. It's just a keyword that I use. and that. <laughs> That is the fault with advertising is that you don't really know what the product is there, but that's, that's beside the point. What's happening here is that by getting one image, keywording all these, then I can select all of them and then I go synchronize, synchronize the keywords. And now all I have to do is go back to the other ones and add the differences. So for example, let me go back, sliced, knife cutting board so you just add the keywords that are for each image but you're already starting with 20 or 30 which makes life a lot easier and it's the same thing with the description all I do is add what is on this image copy and synchronize and now I got 10 done in one shot the images are very similar a lot of them are gonna get rejected because they're similar images there's nothing I can do about that but I'm gonna submit all of them and let the agencies decide which ones they want to keep and which ones they don't. Once I've done all the keywording and all this stuff here, then all I do is export the images. So all your keywords are here, your title and description are just below. I select all the images that are, are done. In this case, there was 100. Then I hit export that is down in this corner right here. And that brings up this uh, floating window right here. So here you can choose where you want them to go. I have a folder in my desktop that it's called, it's titled strawberries for stock submission. And this is particularly only for this video. So I have it separate. I export everything at 100% in quality and a resolution of 300 uh, pixels per inch, 300 PPI. So this will export the photos at the highest quality possible. That way the agencies are gonna um, have the biggest file available and that also adds more to the sale of the image. Think about how is this product going to be used? How does it feel? What memories does it bring? A lot of some of these pictures, let me see if I find them here. So this, this picture right here, that's strawberries and cream with a little bit of sugar. That's something that my dad used to make for me when I was a kid. I don't know if anybody else ever ate that, but it was awesome, it's delicious. So I included some of these pictures. It's a memory that I hold dear in my heart. It, it was really tasty. And every time I look at strawberries, that's what I think of, a bowl of strawberries and cream with a little bit of sprinkled sugar. And then you look at uh, concepts. So there's chocolate covered strawberries, why not? Or a jar of strawberry jam, fresh strawberry jelly. I did have to delete all the keywords and I photoshopped all this out of here because you don't want other people's logos or anything else in your images. Even the jar had a name and I got rid of that. So that's something you gotta keep in mind. It's when you use a product or somebody that you, something that you bought, it's to take away anything, any evidence I, that that's not homemade. <laughs> uh, what's, there's another concept here I did. It didn't turn out that pretty, but it was accepted. It's a football for uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So there are seasonal items. Some of these might sell for Valentine's Day. Other ones might sell for a food product or a milkshake, whatever. There's just, the more you add, how is the product going to be used? The more questions you can answer, the more possibility you're gonna have to sell this item. 
And then you can also complicate things a little bit more and do a photo shoot like this where you're editing literally just stuck in a stick and I photoshopped the stick out of the, the strawberry. It's, it's fairly simple when you know what you're doing. But again, this is another way to practice, to learn basic techniques like this. Let's get back to the upload. I'll show you here real quick. So right here, Shutterstock, upload content. If I click, it opens this window. Then I go back to the folder. I have 10 images. Select all, Command A, drag and drop. Now you can see them here. There's a little bar that's telling you when they're uploading. Uh, so very quickly, I guess my internet's a little slow today, but you can see there's one, there's two. So all 10 images are online now, and now I can go here and click next. When you get to this page in Shutterstock, you're able to add or change the keyword for each one. I'd rather do this in Lightroom, and that simplifies the process completely. But once you have them here, you select, you add your categories. So now I'm gonna click submit. When you go to Adobe, it's very similar. Here's upload. So in Adobe stock, you go in, you click upload. We click it, you select the images and you drag and drop. Same as we did before. Okay, that one is saying it's too large. So it's way too many megapixels, which is, I'm not worried about it. I have way, I have way too many images that are very similar. I know they're not gonna accept every image out of 200, but I know they're gonna take the majority of them. So now same thing here with Adobe, you select your image. All the keywords are there, so it's just asking me if there's any recognizable people or property. When I click no, that's it. I just click up here where it says submit all the files. So then I can go here and see an in review. Here's the nine images that got uploaded, and now they're waiting to be reviewed. And then this process can take up to three or four days. Uh, I did 190 pictures a couple of days ago, and this were the results. Here is a non-accepted and they declined about 37 images. And if I click here, why? Similar image, similar image, similar image, similar image, which again, it's fine. I'd rather them choose what they think is gonna sell than me trying to guess. So that's why I do so many that are similar, different lighting style, different composition, different depth of field. Um, and the more you practice, the more you learn what they accept. So out of 190 images, they accepted 145 that's a lot that's a big that's a those are good numbers same thing with shutterstock they'll tell me focus 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 noise and grain and they're right some of these images weren't perfect i took everything with natural light i was hand holding the camera i used the the um my iso was a little bit higher that's fine i knew that i wanted to show you why they're telling me this so when it says focus now i can work on that focus i'll show you the image here full size on the screen so you can see where they think the focus missed, or it could just be too soft. If, if it was the end of the day, the light was soft, I was just clicking, maybe there's a little bit of motion blur, they'll tell you right here. So this is what helps you get better because when you understand what's wrong with the image, you could do it again, you could do it better, you could learn for next time. So this is something that I wanna keep track of. I put all these files on all these images on a folder or in a gallery in Shutterstock. If you follow my page, I'm gonna show you once a month or so, how these images are doing and what kind of income you can make from a photo shoot like this, because I'm curious. And then once you upload the images and they're just pending, uh, just leave it alone and move on to the next shoot. It doesn't matter how many get accepted and how many don't. I mean, it does because you can learn, but don't be hang up of, oh, they rejected one or they said no, it doesn't matter. That, it's a numbers game. The more images you have, the more potential of income you have. And that's that's exactly why I like stock photography. And at the same time, I wanna open the door for anybody that's interested in photography. I'm gonna put an email down here in the description. Send me your pictures, send me an image or two or three or wh however many you wanna send me. Well, maybe not too many, but send me high quality images to that email. It's wallertphotography at gmail.com and I will review them on a video. Every time I have 10 or 20 images, I'll do a, another video and I'll review each one of your pictures. I'll keep, your, I'll keep them anonymous, I'll just show the image and based on my experience, I'll tell you if it's gonna get accepted or what you need to work on. So I'm gonna do that from now on, uh, one video a, a month if I have enough pictures and I'm also gonna give you an update on how these images are, are doing because like I said, I'm curious, why not? <laughs> Stock photography is not only for food or for products, it also works on your vacation, travel photography. If you look at my my stats over here, so pictures of hummingbirds, I made $700 of pictures of hummingbirds. 
I went to Peru on vacation and I made almost $3,000 from that vacation. To Belize, almost $4,000. To the UK, Scotland and, and uh, England, that's over $3,000. So it's not just strawberries. It's not just something like this. It works for anything and everything that you're interested in. It is a lot of work. It's time consuming. Then why not put the time now so that a couple of years down the road, just like Adobe just did, I could get the chance to get a $10,000 uh, bonus once a year. I don't know. That could be awesome. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel. Maybe next week I'll make a video with the Mini 3. This thing is awesome. It feels like a toy. If it stops raining, I'll make a video. It looks sunny now, but don't let that fool you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.